I said a few minutes ago that we needed to talk about the collection point. I said something about the collection point custodian attending two meetings a month. One meeting that I'd like for that person to be in is the meet committee chairman's meeting. And the other meeting is a meeting of equal importance to the team, our team. This meeting is a meeting that will consist of no less than five collection points, no more than seven. It's a monthly meeting that will be called, conducted, and chaired by your area or regional supervisor. This meeting is what I prefer to call a leadership and development meeting. This is a positive meeting, a meeting designed to give you all the necessary information to be successful leaders and to give you the opportunity to have a healthy exchange of good, positive plans and ideas with people from other areas, with people who have had similar experiences in working as leaders with NFO. The first thing that it says here on this drawing is that this meeting will be held after the 15th of every month. The reason your regional supervisor will not call a leadership meeting before the 15th of any given month is that he needs, for your information, your volume figures for the month previous. <coughs> and any other information that may be in our bookkeeping or accounting system in the home office. The equipment there is for your use, and in order to be safe, it was determined that after the 15th of the month, that information would all be through accounting, and your regional supervisor could bring that information to the meeting to the leadership so that they might properly evaluate what happened last month, discuss their successes and their failures, if there are any, and make intelligent plans and decisions about what to do in the next month by having the proper information. This meeting has been deemed so important by you, the leadership of the organization, that you have decided to hold this meeting at a collection point. Not at a central area, but at a collection point. You've decided to have this meeting at a collection point for a very important reason. It gives you as leaders the opportunity to see the physical facilities and the impression that NFO has in other areas other than yours. It gives you the opportunity to be both critical and helpful of and with people and leaders from other areas. It gives you the opportunity to broaden your understanding why leaders in other areas do and say the things they do so that you can better understand what's happening someplace else so that you know that you're not alone. This meeting has been deemed so important by the leadership of this organization that it has been made a part of the collection point manager and the collection point custodian's regular job. This simply means that it is part of their regular leadership responsibilities to attend this meeting. The regional supervisor will inform them of the time and place will invite every 
meat committee chairman from the various collection points and all the meat committees that can and will attend for this positive meeting. You people, the leaders of this organization in that meeting will discuss your goals. You will set goals for the next month, for the next three months, however you prefer. You will have, as leaders of the organization, an accurate record of how you got along last month on your goals and be able to see who and what has made success at the collection points. Because you can be sure that in every meeting, in every meeting, there are one, two, or three collection points that set goals a month ago as leaders and obtained them this month just like they planned. And that's important. Because from those people and our own ideas, the rest of us can become successful right away. This meeting has been deemed so important by you, the leadership of the organization, for the 1982 program, that the national office has been directed to pay one car, one car from each collection point to travel to and from this meeting. In other words, you will receive from each collection point mileage for whatever person you tell us to and from this meeting. Now a car will hold at least four, sometimes five, even six people if you're not going too far. It would be your hope as leaders of this organization that each car would go to the meeting full, come with good, positive ideas, and go home excited and with definite goals that you've established to do in the next 30 days. We would hope in this meeting that your regional supervisor could bring to his leadership information concerning changes in the various livestock marketing programs within your area so that you can be current and that he would bring to his leadership new programs that might have become available in the last 30 days to you as leaders in your area. The one thing that I would like to point out is what I've got at the bottom of this drawing. It says, do not try to solve problems at this meeting. What I would like to suggest to you is this that if you have everyday working problems at your collection point that you do not feel have been attended to properly, that you ask your regional supervisor in this meeting to set aside uh, no more than 10 minutes for you to present those problems to him. Not necessarily for him to discuss and try to solve in the meeting, but that he might have the information so that immediately after that meeting in the days following, he can attend to those situations. But this meeting is not the place to try to solve problems. This meeting is a place to plan leadership and develop volume for your organization. The problem solving happens at the collection point meet committee chairman's meeting each month. That's where it takes place. 
you solve the problems of your particular business and your particular collection point at that meeting. When your regional supervisor calls a meeting, go there and be exactly what you are, leaders. Be leaders and develop a plan, a program that is workable for your area to create new volume for your collection point. Carol, yeah, another overlay, please. I now would like to take a few minutes of your valuable time to discuss with you a bonus program or an incentive program that has been put into effect for the commission staffed people, namely the collection point managers at your collection point. What I'm going to do, I have this on the screen before you, and what I'm going to do is just read this to you. And this is a brief explanation of the bonus program for fiscal year 1982. The bonus program for hogs for the fiscal year 1982 will be based upon a 2.5% increase over the same comparable three months for fiscal 1981. This is an example. Point A, ran 1,000 hogs in October of 1980, 1,000 hogs in November of 1980, and 1,000 hogs in December of 1980 for a total of 3,000 hogs for the three-month period. In order for point A to be eligible for a bonus for the same three-month period in fiscal 1982, it then must run a minimum of 3,075 hogs. However, no collection point will be eligible for a bonus program unless it runs a minimum of 687 hogs per month. This is the average run per month for all the NFO collection points in fiscal 1981. The method of payment will be based on 75 cents per hog for that amount of hogs that exceed the 2.5% increase over the same three month period the year prior. And the actual bonus check will then be sent to the recipient every three months. Going on into the slaughter cattle program. The bonus program for slaughter cattle for fiscal 1982 will be based upon the 2.5% increase over the same comparable three months for fiscal 1981. The example again is point A, ran 200 cattle in October, 200 in November of 1980, and 200 in December of the same year. For a total of 600 cattle for the first quarter of fiscal 1981, in order for point A, to be eligible for a bonus for the same quarter in 19, fiscal 1982, it must run a minimum of 615 cattle. However, no collection point will be eligible for the bonus program unless it runs a minimum of 108 head of slaughter cattle per month for each quarter of fiscal 1982. The 108 head per month is the average run for all the NFO collection points for 1981. The method of payment 
for the slaughter cattle will be based upon two dollars per head for that amount of cattle that exceed the 2.5 percent increase over the same three month period the year prior and the actual bonus check again will be sent to the recipient every three months this particular piece of information I brought to you today so that those of you that are not now directly involved with a collection point meat board meat committee or a barn board or in some other capacity might be made aware of the incentive situation that we now have all of your so all of your commission staff should have this information in their hands at this time. Meet committee chairman should be aware of it. If you are aware or become aware of some person that this directly affects that does not have that information, please contact your home office in Corning. And let us get that information in the mail to them right away. This program, incentive program, should and has in the past at various times created some interest and some leadership in some people. Because we're all real, we're all human, and we all like money. Okay, so much for the that portion of it. Uh, Carol, could you give me another overlay, please? I'm going now to go into a kind of a summary of what we've discussed this morning. And as you see before you, a diagram that has to do with the structure of the meat commodity department or the livestock division of the National Farmers Organization. At the top of our structure and the leadership positions up there, you see a big fat word called producers. After all, it is their production and their participation that makes our success what it is. Their memberships, their volume. That's what makes us successful. From those producers, we have supported them with a county meat committee or people that are elected from that group of producers at the county level to be leaders in their counties. And then we arrive at the collection point meat committee or the meat committee chairman. And at this point, the leadership of the organization has been established. And we're on our way because here we see again the focal point of our leadership, the collection point. We see the barn board, those people that create the image with that good facility out there, provide us a place to do business. And we see the collection point, the committee chairman and his committee ready to do business ready to take their responsibilities as leaders and go. We see a regional supervisor who, as I said before, should be made the very best use of all the time that that person can spend with you, you should be using. And of course, we have the commission staff, the collection point manager and the custodian, whom we've discussed earlier and their roles as leaders and part of our team, the total team effort that we're discussing this morning. Supporting that group of leaders, supporting the leadership at the collection point level are the division heads or the regional supervisors and the cattle reps, the feeder cattle representatives, the people that represent the sheep department in the country, the people that give you the 
technical services that you need in the country to become successful leaders. They're there in your support team as a very vital part of your total team project for 1982. And immediately below that, you see the division directors, those people who will assist in coordinating and making the everyday function of your program work. Those people that will provide you with the marketing services that you need. Preform the duties that you as leaders need to have performed for you. It's the responsibility of those directors to provide you with that particular marketing service that fits your particular program, your particular area. And of course, below that, you see the person who coordinates the entire livestock program for you. The meat department director who coordinates and facilitates through his office all the members of the team to keep everything functioning as it should. This person represents the support that is necessary for you as leaders to be comfortable as you go about daily the affairs of being an FO in your community. This person provides you with all the necessary marketing services that you need and coordinates those services for you so that you can be successful leaders and so that you can, with pride, go down the road in your community and say, I am NFO. That's his job. He's very successful at it. He will become even more successful when you people as leaders in 1982 go right on with your program and become successful and reach and obtain the goals that have been committed to you by others. Ladies and gentlemen, I have brought you down through the entire structure of the collection point, the two important meetings. We've discussed the bonus program here briefly. And I've just went through the structure of the livestock division. I'd like to remind you as you look at this thing up here on the screen now, that those of you that have accepted leadership responsibility with the organization should be proud and also be comfortable because you have in fact got support of many people, many followers to help you throughout the year of 1982. At this time, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce to you a person who we just finished talking about. I think he got in here before we maybe got said all we wanted to about him, <laughs> but he's here anyway. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure this morning to bring to you Mr. Walt Hackney, Director of the Meat Department. Walt. Sometimes it's better to get in late when they're talking about you. You don't hear all the stuff you may not need to know. Uh, uh, probably about everything I have to say has already been covered by Carol Olive and Wayne Leedy. But I'm, I'm hopeful that the attitude of why you're here in this meeting has been projected to you properly. I'm very hopeful that you ladies and gentlemen 
are begin, becoming more reckonings of how come this is the first time at a national convention we've had this sort of meeting. You got no particular reason to have given it a lot of thought maybe before today because it's taken us at least two years since I've been director of the livestock department, at least two years, to finally recognize where our actual ball game really starts. You must understand that the livestock department prior to 1979 was really made up of four separate islands. It was the hog department, and they had to have hog people. They had to have hog personnel in the plant, in the points. There were the livestock, the cattle, slaughter cattle division. They had their people, and in some cases, they even had two separate individuals running hogs or cattle at the collection points. Sometimes two separate secretaries would be there as custodians in the points. Well, we knew that existed. Uh, we knew that it was an imbalance. But there were other areas within the livestock department that had to take priority. We had people that were on salary taking your money as members and were absolutely not worth the powder to blow them to kingdom come. That had to be dealt with. We had, we had people that had to be hired, that had to be trained and put back in the system to make it function properly. People willing to work. People willing to give their time and their efforts to you for those monies they were earning to do that service for you. That had to be done. We're not finished, by the way. We have many areas that is still in the process of staff, still in the process of development. But in this last year, through many, many conversations with Wayne, Merle Sunken, Andy Nutzling, slaughter cattle, Gary Ellison, feeder cattle, Carol Olive, the controller of the livestock department, it, be, it has increasingly become evident that we have missed the one link in the livestock department that probably was the most important. We probably should have started this meeting two, three years ago before we started into those other areas. It's, it's become more evident to myself because of the accountability factor that's been presented to me by Carol in the livestock department. She's the one that has been most able to let me know the, the real gaps and the real void in communication and so forth that we have at the collection points. So we talked about it. And this fall, we decided that it was due time to make sure the collection point people, the barn boards, the county meat committees, and that staff in that, in that area realized that we considered them an equal extension of the livestock department. Well... As an equal extension of the livestock department, then by George, we had to recognize that you were. And we got to get busy now and make sure that whatever functions that we agree on performing, we both equally understand them and are capable of performing them. So that's the purpose that Wayne and Carol are here for today. That's the reason they're expressing what they're expressing here today. I would say this, and I think it started with the Collection Point people, and it has become most obvious in the last six months. 
and it has come from the collection points in personal visits with myself if I've been able to cover the areas and visit. What's come up is an attitude that I have feared. I know that it had existed in other departments. I didn't realize that in some areas it existed in the livestock department. The attitude I'm talking about is dictatorship from the national office. There's been an attitude, and it's fairly general, that the national office comes up with a plan for a specific species of livestock, and we standardize it, and we blanket every collection point with the exact precise plan. Not being recognized of the fact that the plan probably should have been customized for the specific areas that we have it in appliance rather than making a blanket policy out of it. Well, I'll take the responsibility for that because this department was in loose arrays when I came into it. They were going three or four directions, none of them too straight. It had to be jerked up short. That's where this dictatorship attitude probably developed, was probably from myself, rather than from the membership or from the staff in the livestock department. So I will be most happy to be the one to tell you that I recognize now we need to back off. It's been a matter of overreaction. And I will be the one today to tell you that in this fiscal year coming, we are going to back off. We are going now with these monthly collection point meetings and the real purpose of them is to get the input of the membership on those programs that best serve your specific community. Then we have certainly got the best capability of designing the handling of your specific programs that best fit your areas. I'm saying this because I know it exists. I know that in Wisconsin, I know in other areas, there's been a lot of criticism that the national office has imposed an unworkable program for my specific area. I know it's happened. I know it exists. And I can also assure you it's going to change because the programs, as Wayne and Carol have laid out here, exist for one reason. It's if the producer likes them and if you can encourage him to take advantage of them. That's the only reason that any of us are here today presenting a livestock program is because of your acceptance of those specific programs. So if we've got a program that isn't applicable in your area, then through your advice coming back to us, we're going to change it. It's that simple. Wayne and Carol, I've probably taken more time than I should have. I had a few things I thought needed to be brought up. I hope that you have gained from this meeting today. Granted, it's the first of, that we've presented, but it certainly is not going to be the last. Eventually, my plan is that this probably will be the most prominent meeting at the national conventions with the hog department, the, live, the cattle department, feeder department, sheep department as support to this meeting. <coughs> I thank you for coming. It was kind of an early hour this morning. And I do appreciate the fact of the interest and the help that you've given Carol and the rest of the department this past year. As she said, I'm sure. We couldn't have made it without you. We had a doggone good year. We've got some goals set that are in increasingly higher than a year ago for this coming fiscal. 
And it will happen if you make it happen for us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hackney. We appreciate you taking the time to come into our meeting this morning for a few minutes. In closing this morning, I would like to do two things. First of all, I want to thank you very much for taking the time to come this morning. I would like to remind you as we depart that we've discussed this morning the leadership of this organization, discussed you people as leaders of the organization, and I would like to, in leaving you this morning, only pledge the support of the Livestock Department to your leadership and to that total team effort that we talked about. Because remember, the team is the success. It's the same thing. Be aware, and I will say it one more time to you. Be aware as leaders of this organization that no one person alone can make success for us. No one particular unit of this organization will create success for us. But each of us as individuals doing what we do best in a leadership roles, doing what we do best together as a total team will give us success. And I wish you the greatest and the best for 1982. Thank you very much and goodbye.